Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is 17th lecture and today we will understand the timing reports that are getting generated in the synopsis related timing tools. It could be ICC or prime time. So we shall see that for different type of timing paths. For example, it could be reg to reg or flip flop to flip flop paths. It could be input port to flip flop. It could be flip flop to output port path also. So now let's move on and see that report understanding. So the first case that we are going to see is reg to reg path timing report that is flip flop to flip flop. So the first part of the report is describing the basic elements of the report. So what is the start point? What will be the end point in the path that is mentioned? The edge triggering of the flip flop will be mentioned. So this is here it is mentioned clearly that this is rising edge triggered flip flop and the flip flop is clocked by this type of clock. So clock name is also mentioned in the start point and end point. Mode corner scenarios are mentioned. It could be same and it could be different depending on the type of characterization and uh, settings done by your timing team. So these are the corners values and path group is also mentioned. We will talk about the path group later on also and path type this is important because it mentions that whether it is a setup timing path or it is a hold timing path so path type max means it is a setup timing path if it is path type min then it is hold timing path sigma is mentioned so sigma is a variation variation value across the chip they characterize this after doing a lot of experiment and come to a conclusion that what sigma is going to be and we will talk about this uh, variation also in the later on videos so let's move on and now see what else is there in the report so this is you can say the start of the report basically which is of significance for us to anal analyze the timing report well in this report you can see that there are two columns first is increment column and second is path column path column is accumulation of this increment which is happening step by step so for each stage what is the delay is mentioned in this column and what is the final accumulated delay of that data path is mentioned in this column so this first part of report is actually your data path report which starts from this clock so clock is prime clock and it is of rising edge at 0 ps so after that they have mentioned clock network delay which is ideal so clock is ideal means generally we have zero skew and there is no transition delay is assumed in this case but we can see that there is some number mentioned which this is here in case of this is 50 ps so what it means is that the delay they have modeled is 50 ps in case of ideal clock network so in case of ideal clock network they will mention some value which is an estimated value such that when the clock is becoming real and it is actually propagating in your design there will be some good correlation between this value this estimated ideal value and uh, what is the final real value so let's say after building of the clock tree the clock network delay comes out to be 56 or 60 ps let's say so there is only 10 ps of delta between this type of report and the report that comes after the clock is real now let us look at the other elements of the timing report so you can see after this clock path is mentioned the pa the arc is going to the clock pin that is ck pin of this instance so this is the instance name and in the bracket whatever is mentioned is called as ref name or the reference name so this is the hierarchy top level hierarchy you can say that is diamond cf cmd fifo and inside that this is the register name or flip-flop name and ck is the pin on which we are seeing that the timing path is going so our arc is traveling from the clock and it is hitting the clock pin of this trk pop flip flop register 00 slash ck pin and the reference name of this type of flip flop is lvt type and ff underscore 2 so this is actually dependent on your whatever the foundry is and whatever the library has the reference name 
so inside that they follow some kind of nomenclature based on which they decide the reference name for each type of instance so for this instance the reference name is this and here we have already only tried to tell you that this is the reference name and this will be the instance name inside the bracket you will find a reference name and it is dependent on the foundry or technology and this is your instance name so after this ck pin the arc is going to the q pin of the same flip flop and again the reference name is this and increment is happening of 39.635 ps this is in nanoseconds so 39.635 is the increment that means the delta that is the delay of this flip flop would be 39 ps and you can see that it would be added in the path side so total path delay will become from 50 ps to 89 ps and based on that it keeps on traveling through the arc and final arrival time will become 43 ps so let's see how does it look like actually graphically so how it is actually here is let's say this is your clock source from where the clock was coming and there was some 50 ps of delay before it would hit this ff1 clock pin so 50 ps was the delay if you see till it hits ck pin total delay was 50 ps till it hits the clock pin of this flip flop after that so there is clock to queue delay that is propagation delay of this flip flop and the 39 ps is the delay of this flip flop and at the queue pin total delay will become 59 plus 50 plus 39 that would be 89 ps you can see here it is 89 ps and after that it goes to again some combinational logic now will start coming into the picture there is a combinational logic 1 2 3 4 and 5 before it hits this register address slash 34 so there is a bus of, in which one flip flop is of 34 so this is the flip flop and the d pin is this so sender slash o data reg is actually this flip flop we are talking about here this will be the capture flip flop so you can say this is your capture side flip flop and this was your launch side flip flop and in between the combinational delay and the register reference name is this instance name is this so total arrival time will be right from this point that is 50 ps till it hits this this pin so that would be your total arrival time that is here mentioned as 43 ps that is the total arrival time so graphically we can imagine it like this now let's move on to the other part of the report so far the delay that we have seen is actually starting from the clock source and it ends at the d pin of the capture side flip-flop that is your data arrival time and now let's see the next part which is actually required time which starts at the clock source again but it will be on the capture clock pin that is your clock path so this was your data path and this is your clock path cp this was your data path you can say dp so this is your required time arc which will start at the clock again and the clock period is 400 ps so it is like this if you imagine in the graphically so this will be the case if you see it is launched at 0 ps in the data side but when the capture side comes so total one full cycle is covered so total 400 ps is here and there is certain clock latency so there is certain clock latency which is present in the capture side and the launch side both here also it is 50 ps here also it is 50 ps the same because there is no skew skew is ideal so 50 ps it will take from the clock source till it hits the clock pin of this flip flop and it hits the clock pin of the this flip flop capture side both is 50 ps so 50 ps will be here also and it will get added in one full cycle so total network latency total you can say clock path is actually 400 plus 50 450 is your total delay in the clock side till now and before it hits this pin once it hits the, the pin so that is this name the flip-flop name is like this sender slash 
O data reg address 34. So sender is your you can say hierarchy inside which this flip flop is present and it has the clock pin. This we already told you that inside the bracket is your ref name of the flip flop and once it hits inside so there is 450 ps so here till here you can see that it is 450 till it hits this pin and now there is certain clock uncertainty that is actually in in this case since this is ideal right the clock is ideal so the uncertainty that is skew and jitter is estimated skew and estimated jitter because we wanted to have a good correlation between the ideal clock report and the real clock report. So that is why there is certain uncertainty that we will take into account. Here they have taken thir around 33 PS. So that 33 PS will be actually subtracted. So as we already told you that there will be certain uncertainty which has to be subtracted from the clock side. So that is 33 PS that will be subtracted from this. So your required time will actually be 450 minus 33 approximately we are taking 33 PS okay and there is certain library setup time also so that will be anyway there so that library setup time already we have explained in the previous video here it is 6 PS that will also be taken into this account so 6 PS you may add here or you can subtract from the total. So that is subtracted and finally the data required time comes out to be 409 PS that is mentioned here. Now slack how do you calculate data required time minus data arrival time. So 409 minus 435 they have done and finally the slack is violating by 23 PS. Okay. So this was the required data arrival time. And this was your data required time that we just now calculated. And once you subtract it, you get the final slack report that is violating by 23 PS. This was your reg to reg path timing report. This is how we calculate it. That's all for today. In next video, we will explain you input port to reg path and reg to output port path. Since we are running out of time in this video, we will see those two in next video. Please share and subscribe to the channel and please give your feedbacks in the comment section. Thank you.